Can you guys hear me? Let's see. Can you hear me? Yep, good, okay. Hey guys. Let's see, did I mess up something? Oh. How's it going? Hey, Britain, didn't see you since yesterday. Hi. <laughs> Wait, I need to uh, I need to increase volume. Let's see what it I messed up something in just a second. Ah. Is it better now? Can you, yeah, I can still hear you the same. Can you hear us better? Uh, I think my headphones don't work. Let's see. Is it okay now? Yep. Say something. Hello. Ah, yeah, my headphones don't work. How is this possible? Huh. Ooh, I think I messed up. And <laughs> God, yeah, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. this is all. <laughs> Let's see the baby. Where is the baby? Polly? Polly is eh. I can't really decide who is my favorite. Where is Benny? Uh, oh, he's over here on the floor. Benny is also, Benny is really gorgeous. I, I, they're just different. different. They're different cats. Yeah, there's Benny. He's just over there chilling. He does not want to come up for a, a wee cuddle. He's off in his own little world. Yeah, he's a loaf. Ah, he's a nice cat. Just a different there's lots of different characters. So oh yeah. Benny is uh yeah, he's a crazy kid. And Paul, he's so affectionate and loving. <laughs> yeah, I saw my cat today and I realized that she's uh, pro she probably has more pounds than my child when my mother showed her to me I was like sweet mother of god what are you feeding her with oh I know right Paul he's like a he's a good solid 10 pounds you know average and then there's Benny and he's like 15 pounds I'm like, Benny is <gasps> big. I'm like you gotta go on a diet and he's so yeah, I, told my, I, I told my mother today that definitely it has to be she has to put her on some sort of diet because she will have cholesterol like diabetes who knows what sort of diseases can occur when you're so fat so oh yeah i know right but, before i so i start i clicked the recording so um, i don't think we need that but i better record it in case somebody wants to hear a review like the, so just be aware we are recording but I, I will share it only in case somebody asks if you are okay with that. If somebody is not okay with that, you just let me know. So I will I I won't share. But I clicked on link when when I saved it. So anyway, we are all here. So let's um, let's start with a brief review. So I will share my screen uh, with the midterm questions, and I will go over each of them. And then what you guys can do, you can ask me questions in case I don't um, cover some of them. Can you all see screen now? Yes. Okay, okay. cool. So um, uh, it should be, I'm hoping it's straightforward, but so again, I won't read really each question. But, so the first question, uh, many antibiotic uh, nisin inhibits growth of gram positive bacteria. So what you need to do, what is the formal name of nisin target and name and, and some monomer and name some monomers it flips over. So basically here you uh, need two words, nothing else. So uh, it's a unit one. I think it's unit one. So you it's kind of, it, it, it's one of those key molecules that I talked about uh, when we talked about peptidoglycan biosynthesis and those stuff. So there is very, very specific 
target and there is a paper about it okay are you are everyone clear is everyone clear with this question okay so two words actually i might better stop sharing we don't need sharing i don't because i have key here and i don't want to show you key of the exam so basically what you need there is a formal name and um, uh, so formal name you there is a paper about it so um, it's not in my lecture but you can use something that is in my lecture but there is a paper about it and uh, it's easy to find uh second one um, explain the cause of membrane potential collapse uh, and also the leakage of small metabolites so how to tell you this mm. basically you need to explain the interactions between antibiotic uh, and the target and um, what is going to happen what kind of changes will that cause on uh, one of cell compartments like and then whatever happens will change membrane potential so hint think about uh, acidophilic response so like what's happening uh, when there is a change in ph so that's uh, that's the main answer second question glycosylation part so there are many questions about this so name two types of glycosylation we covered in class so we did not cover any glycosylation in class just i didn't change that i forgot to change that wording i just talked briefly about glycosylation but i didn't specifically mention those two glycosylations and the reason why i didn't is because i had it in exam and i wanted you guys to search for it so um, when you think about two types of glyco glycosylation, so uh, it's easy to find. So it's you will easily find two glycosylation types. The third one, I heard recently that there are papers about third one, but when I created this question, there were no papers or I couldn't find it. But what you need to know, you don't have to find a paper. Mm. Based on what you know from first two types of glycosylation, like where glycosylation happens on which molecule, and then think about those molecules and which atoms those molecules have where sugar can attach. So there are no many. So the hint is amino acid. So think about where sugar goes. And that's all what you need to describe. Mm. Then uh b in addition yes so what is the atom so think about amino acids and which atoms you have in amino acids if you find if you find paper excellent if not you just explain uh, can you list at least one species that has all three i so if you can't it's fine it's fine but I will be fine if you list some that have at least two and then the one that has the third or just describe a little bit, like one paragraph. So you don't have to find bacteria. I don't think there is bacteria that has all three. Uh, then, third question. This is a question from a lecture which metabolite is a key you remember when we talked about uh, membrane biosynthesis so hint glycolysis so i recently talked about that in class so that's the hint uh, you need only one word i don't mind if you write more but be careful to first answer what i am asking so the question is clear. This metabolite originally is from central carbon metabolism, and it started it, it is starting point 
in glycerol phosphate molecule and lipid biosynthesis. So what is the precursor, the, this precursor molecule? So one word, that's all. Why would growth on methanol rather than methanol lead to the increase in abundance? So mm, uh, in abundance of this metabolite. So think about differences when cell grows on methane versus methanol. So there is very specific, there are two papers or three that are talking about that. So basically changes in methane versus methanol. And think about, so we think about, I actually mentioned that in class, what kind of stress methanol is causing. So what is methanol? So it's alcohol. So what kind of stress it's causing and how cells are dealing with the alcohol stress? What are they adjusting? If you find the paper from our, paper from our lab group, by Catherine Tyson, all 2018, you will see answer to this question very easy. Then, question four. Mm -hmm. So, protein that performs function in periplasm. So, think about those secretion systems translocation systems, sorry. And the key point here is, um, if you don't find protein, what the protein is missing. So what is the main thing that targets, that sends cell, that, that sends protein to periplasm? So just think about that. What is that key sequence? Mm. Then, what explanation as to what your experiment did not show active gene protein in periplasm and how would you prove your um, answer experimentally? So, again, there are many ways to answer this question. Why there is no, so once when you know mm, what is guiding protein to periplasm, what could happen? So protein is not in periplasm. What can cause the loss? If something happened in cell and protein is not there. But first you need to know what is that, what is targeting cell uh, protein to periplasm. How would you prove it? So it's, I'm pretty sure you can find a paper, so I can't really tell you experiment, but uh, Think about controls and knockouts knock, uh, and that type of thing. So I can't really tell you answer. So how would you prove that that's the case, that it was mutation or whatever it was? Then question five. So this was, uh, there were many confusions about this. So when you are asked about increased level of palmitoic acid in membranes, so what is the environment? So you need to say, um, you need to know what type of fatty acid is palmitoic acid. And then uh, for the environment, it would be one of those. So, so one of those, so I can't really tell you, is it, uh, it is temperature, but is it cold or hot? I won't tell you. Uh, so it's a, difference in different different type of fatty acids. So what type of fatty acid it is? Yes, Britain is right. Brock biology is the best answer. Uh, this is the best key. And what is adaptation? So think about saturation versus unsaturation. So that's the type of adaptation that I'm looking for. And uh, heptadecanoic, the same thing. Uh, Proton impermeable membrane. So you need to know it's apparently pH stress. So is it high or low? Mm. And the way how you will describe adaptation is basically you describe why is what what why is cell impermeable for proton. So what is how is cell protecting itself when it prevents protons to come in? So that's adaptation. So you just describe. So when cell is impermeable for protons, cell is doing 
what? Preventing blah, 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 protons to go, come, that kind of thing. So that's adaptation that you need. Uh, more positive uh, inside than outside. So again, be careful with this one. Mm. Think about what's happening in response when cell is accumulating a positive, um, positive charge inside, in which environment is that happening and be very careful. And which ions are in charge to create that positive potential. So if you know what I'm telling you, what, if you understand what I'm saying, you will know there is actually very specific adaptation that related to that. And we talk a lot about that. It is about some ion input. So go to lectures and it will be clear. Then more, po uh, High expression of potassium uh, transporters in membrane. So mm, this one is can be a little tricky. So it can be both. So you can you can explain. So potassium transport exists in in high and in low pH, but direction is different. So as long as you explain, I'm fine. I will accept both answers. Mm. High expression of um, sol, I, how I said that, high expression of uh, mm, salt transporters, that's very clear. So it's pretty much on slide and it tells you. Which type of stress it is and then so this is all for section one. Uh, any questions about section one before I go to section two. Ah, adaptation portion, Berat. Yeah. So what's the pretty much its explanation? Yes. So you can explain. Like I can't. I can't. You have to explain how is that adaptation helping to to survive the stress. So I'm I'm trying to give an example so I don't give you the answer. But mm, what can be? What can be? Mm. Like for example, um, sodium pro sodium sodium uh, sodium uh, motive force instead of proton motive force uh, would be so. If I ask you that, you so if I if I wrote like a um, sodium uh, proton motive force as the, as example, that would be high pH, and then I would say a uh, cell is relying on sodium instead of protons because the uh, cell is trying to maintain internal pH because outside it's a uh, hi very high pH. So cell is trying to protect itself. So that you, you just basically explain. One adaptation for each. So uh, the question says one ad adaptation for each. So one adaptation for each example, for example, for, uh, for high expression of sodium uh, uh, proton antiporter, you just need to explain um, one. So basically one sentence, that's what it is. Because there are various adaptations for alkaline environment, for example, but you just need to explain for these high expressions of sodium uh, hydrogen antiport. So just explain. That's it. Yeah, I, there are many questions. Let's see. The questions. So, uh, Ricky, you just explain adaptation.
I think we are good. Okay, good. So basically, I mean, I'm trying to tell to see if um, how to give you that example. <laughs> yeah, I think I, I I think I already told you pretty much everything of how that. This is not content related, but can we use review articles? Yes, yes, you can use any source of any any source. So for this one, I really don't mind. You can use anything. Uh, I I mean, I was telling that Brittany recently. Uh, I really don't mind you guys using web pages. Um, of course, you have to cite that. But when you find information on web page, it would be much better if you confirm that information in um, with a with scientific article because there are all sorts of web pages out there and we really don't know how peer how how peer reviewed that is like uh, yeah no you don't need to cite lectures so if you have my lectures dr science lectures you don't have to cite that uh, or only if it's an um, original scientific article web page or book So for question five, you just write which type of environment, like hot temperature, cold, hot, uh, cold, uh, acidic, alkaline, high salt, or whatever. And then you describe how that sodium proton um, antiporter is actually helping cells to survive. That would be adaptation. Is that clear now? Good. So let's go now to uh, section two. So you don't have to answer all questions. So make sure you know. So again, I really don't mind, but I, if you, you can answer everything, but I will mark only four of them. And I will mark in that order. So for question six, so again, I won't read really all questions, but what is important in this question, so these are essay questions. So you can write there, it's allowed to write. What I would recommend you first answer what I'm asking. So for example, in question six says, potential mechanism of resistance that this bacterium develops for penicillin, vancomycin, isoniazid, and platensimycin. So mechanism of resistance can be beta lactamase for example a mutation in gene or it can be protein that binds antibiotic and degree and prevents its further action mm. so write that down respond respond to that and then you can write more about how that mechanism was developed where it was discovered but first, right mechanism of resistance. So how bacterium is resistant? It's, did it adopt beta lactamase? Did it accept it plasmid that contained uh, antibiotic binding protein? Did it develop efflux pump? Something like that. But respond to that first. Uh, second one, how would you test proposed mechanism of resistance? OK, so for this one, you basically find a paper that talks about testing mechanism of resistance. So it's that's something that really depends on what you found. There are multiple papers over there. So how would you test whether there is mechanism of resistance? The, how would you test if bacterium is resistant to antibiotics? You all took 265. So if you remember those disks that we put on plate and then you measure zone of inhibition. So that's one way. Yes, you, yeah, uh, so what else we have? What part of bacterial cell would you recommend as target? Okay, so this is basically open. What, think about what's the best target for antibiotics. So you can think about various targets. It doesn't have to be only peptidoglycan biosynthesis. We never talked about uh, antibiotics that target DNA synthesis. We talked about fatty acid biosynthesis antibiotics, but there are all sorts of different types of antibiotics. So that can be, be creative. 
you can you don't you can find the reference but i don't mind if you have your own idea like something that it's like a bio prospecting think about if you think about what would be if you are designing if you are working for a biotech company and you are asked to design a novel antibiotic for some new target uh, so um, David asked, for 6B, do you expect to see different methods to test resistance for different antibiotics? It doesn't have to be different methods. You can, it can be the one method. Like depends from antibiotic, Dep depends. You can, it's really up to you. What's next? Yeah. Do you think that combination of already known antibiotics would change microbial cell response? Uh -huh. So here, you need to condense in one response everything what you know about the mechanism of, of those mechanism of those known antibiotics. So if you put all of them, and you target bacterial cell with all them, describe what would happen. So you explain how each of them works and what changes will that make on cell. And then give your own opinion. Uh, this uh -huh, question seven, this is from lecture. So there is a paper about this, Jacqueline, Jacqueline McCushion, uh, Publish that paper so you can find that paper. So I won't go in detail because it's a real world question. So just you can find the paper and explain. So just think, uh, pill T, we talked about that. What pill Q does, what pill T does, and the uh, mm, mutations, like what do they cause? And um, think about what phage recognizes and uh, if mutation happen, will that structure be there and why and how will that affect stage binding uh eight question question eight caulobacter so uh the, here in addition to uh, those known three cytoskeletal proteins caulobacter crescentus is a very famous um, bacterium that has a polar organization and there are very there is a set of proteins that are involved in uh, polar organization. So a hint, it's a um, group from Bowman's lab uh, at the University of Wyoming. So they are working with this bacterium and they discovered multiple proteins. So I'm fine if you put only those that I thought about, but I would really like if you go, it does have to be Bowman's group. There are various groups who are working on that. Uh, in fact, um, that polar organization of Cavolobacter served to the, that group that I used to work with. I mean, I, we, we collaborated uh, to design asymmetric cell division. Mm, it's like a microbial factory that, so basically the, that that's very famous, uh, that, that's very famous good paper, it's published in Nature. So basically they engineered cells to divide not on two equal cells, but two different cells, basically. So asymmetric cell division, that's your hint. Try to search that and then you will find all sorts of paper that talk about polar organization. Uh, and yes, of course, you need to know which protein is doing what. So very easy from lectures. Question nine. Mm. So the question is, so again, pay attention to question. After seven days, you come back to the lab and you perform product extraction. Surprisingly, the amount of product is low and doesn't correspond to the biomass that was reported. So here, think about what dilution rates in chemostat. What could you do wrong? Or what can happen in bioreactor? I think I was talking about that. Like 
what if bioreactor contaminates? What if phage infection occurs? It's a big problem. So think about that, about, uh, like in a pro, in pro, improper dilution rate. What would be if it's low or high? So those are hints, some of hints. Ricky asks, is the amount of biomass obtained high or low? What the question says. It says it's, it doesn't specify. So it says the product is very low and doesn't uh, con in. So you, you know that product is low. You can assume, I will leave that, uh, I will leave that to you to decide. So if biomass was high and obtained product was low, what could happen with bioreactor? So biomass was fine. It, it, you can decide. You can say if it biomass was high, product was low, this could happen because of this this and that. And then you explain why would why would what was dilution rate? How dilution rate affected? If biomass was low and product was also low, then what happened to dilution rate? So you can you can choose. It's not specified. So the uh, second one was how did incorrect step negatively affected growth? So growth. So again, everything really depends from your question A. So what you answer to the question A, you can choose what was your biomass, but you have to justify. Does that answer the question? Yeah. So you choose and you explain. Uh, and then the last one says, how can you correct the process? Eh. So again, really will depend what you choose. So if you choose that, if you choose that biomass was low, for example, and product was low, that means what with your dilution rate so you would adjust the dilution rate but you have to so these questions require you to this explain like to, to elaborate on low dilution rate high dilution rate contamination etc cetera, etc cetera. so you can't really just write one sentence and expect to get 10 points you have to elaborate eh. question 10 there is actually paper about it so what is the reason for killing? So think about secretion systems, what kind of molecules are secreted, what type of secretion system are mixobacteria use, and how that kill cells. There is a paper about that. Again, wall group, you, it's easy to find. Mm. What's the second one? Which type of secretion system? So you need to explain. And when you write which type of secretion system, describe that secretion system. And briefly describe how you would test hypothesis. Again, there are papers about it. So people make all sorts of mutations with different so they make different strains with different mutations and they pair them so they can see whether the killing would happen or not. I personally made some of those mutations. And it was very cool. Uh, ah, ele question 11. So two students are working together studying stress response and adaptations. So Jessica, uh, so. Um, I think I changed this. I think I changed the names in this one. Just uh, received a gallon of water collecting from Adriatic Sea. Uh, fishermen complain to the local authorities that they keep collecting dead fish and they are not sure what change in the environment to cause destruction. So then another student did a rapid check on the water pH and it was four, so low pH. So now, uh, the first question is what type of measurements could students do to characterize physiology and membrane adaptations? So that's your first question. 
So if you know what type kind of pH is pH four, so you know what kind of pH and then think what can you measure, then describe what type of bacteria, how was the name of those bacteria, like if like that, 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 that adapted, so what their name, and then describe how did they adapt it. Basically, what changed in their membranes? What did they do? So yeah, they will measure what and what will happen inside the cell with those bacteria. Describe their physiology. And then the second portion is what would what would result what would results might be expected from measurements. So what will you measure? Something on membrane. So what kind of that thing will like so what describe that thing on membrane? I can't tell you word because it would be like uh, me telling you the answer. And that is in my lectures. Um, say, uh, question B, Alejandro, um, another student tested to see if isolates were permanently adapted or they were experienced acid shock. So what kinds of tests did he perform to make a difference between these two possibilities that was measured? So again, go to my lectures, listen to Dr. Stein's lectures if my were too confusing. Um, it's a unit five second portion from Thursday, the differences between real acidophilic bacteria and those that adapted. And the last one, name some examples of microorganisms that are found in low environment. So just find some uh, organisms that live at low pH. And uh, when you find those organisms, you can brief describe for each of them i think three will be enough are they really like a real files or they just are neutral files but then they adapted so i think three will be fine don't find only one because these questions really require research so that would be all and now you guys go through questions so i hope this was helpful I gave you as much hints as I could. So, I mean, I can't really tell you answers. So it, you would have to find them by yourself. Okay. I'm glad Dave, uh, now you guys ask. I'm glad it was helpful, really. We can have the, we will have those sort of reviews also for final, just probably in person. This was not planned and I spend all day in lab. So. Uh, Sakib asked, just wondering, will this recording be available in class? If you want, yes. If you guys agree, I can put it on e class. Yeah, cool. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I will put it on iCloud. Um, probably um, in a few hours. So because I'm recording this on iCloud, uh, I get full recording like uh, 30 in 30 minutes. So what I will do, I will convert it to YouTube video and then upload to midterm um, to midterm portion of uh, eClass. So if you guys want, you can see. Questions, questions. Um, Kyle asked question. Hey, D, are you just asking the function of each protein? God, I forgot what was the question, AD. Hey, question 8D. Please describe briefly regulation of cell shape and morphogenesis determinants. Yes, just the function of each pro protein in brief description. Yeah. So those three that I have in lectures and one more maybe involved in polar organization. It's very easy to find that paper. It's a famous thing. I mean, most of these questions are actually real world questions. 
So you will notice that I shared real stories from my previous researches and collaborations. So but you don't have to use those papers that I told you you should you go around and uh, there are really no wrong answers here. So yes, in first portion, not in second. But we will mark here um, the way how you write and summarize. So don't be surprised. Like I know you guys will all expect if you write like 50 pages, you will get full marks. But it's not only about writing everything what you find. It's about con being concise and organized. So write it nicely, describe it nicely. It would help a lot if you write in paragraphs. Because then when I read, I can really, you know, sit and enjoy. Not if you, and don't do copy pasting from papers because I will notice that. I read scientific papers all day, every day. So if you do copy paste, that is plagiarism and that's not allowed. And so organize your thoughts is what I'm trying to say. A student did ask earlier about uh, what type of citation style, if you have a uh -huh. preference or if any preference is okay. Don't don't care at all. Uh, as long as the only thing that it should be that I care about is to, to have everything in the same style, which you get when you have bibliography at the end. So that's all what I care about. Nothing else. I don't care about font. I don't care about those lines and that kind of thing. Questions, questions, guys. Okay, so are we good? Question A, Melissa says question A, one A, uh-huh, yep. How many monomers should we name? Mm, a one. One would be fine. Mm. I am okay if you find that one. There is actually a very keyword, one keyword, and that's totally fine. But if you write more, it's okay. I don't mind. Just don't write really five pages for that question. You will need a lot of things to write in second portion. So one is mine. We're waiting. More questions. Do we have more questions? Okay. Oh, Ricky has a question. I'm waiting. Resistance, aha, uh -huh. question about resistance. Which question is that? Like second one, is it second one? No, it's a, it is not seven, not eight. Which question is that? Aha, uh -huh. question six, aha. Uh -huh. Question six, yeah. We can list multiple, yes, you can list multiple mechanisms of resistance. Yes, I would. If it's one that I didn't talk about in class, even better. You can use those from class, but then add another one that you find by yourself. I would love that. Umut asks, question 6D, can we also mention how, how Bacter morphology changes 
Oh, yes, you definitely can. How, uh, when environmental conditions change, yes. I see somebody found the paper. Yes, that's it, that you can definitely. If I, uh, if Ivan, sorry, Ivan asks for question 6b. I just wanted to clarify that we are providing exams of how we could test if our proposed mechanism is the one that is present. Yes, how you would test. However, I'm pretty sure that you did not invent the method. So you have to cite that. So cite the paper where you found. Okay, so if you guys, so whoever doesn't have questions, you guys have, you, you can go, it's all fine. I mean, I don't want to rush you. If you have questions, ask. If not, you can go, it's all fine. Uh, and I will post recordings uh, later on on the class and announce that. You're welcome, guys. That's why I'm here. Have a good night.